Happy Sunday. Today I'm going to show you how I've been incorporating this antioxidant serum from Regimen Labs, the Vitamin X that I reviewed for you guys, into my morning skincare routine. I'm just going to start out by washing my face. I've been using this Abib uh, cleanser. It has salicylic acid in it. That's just going to lower the pH a little bit of my skin to allow for better penetration of the antioxidants in this. I'm going to use cool to lukewarm water and never boil your face. <laughs> Comment below, are you a once a day face washer or a twice a day face washer? Typically I only wash my face at nighttime, as you guys know, but lately I've been doing an AM cleanse and it kind of helps this go in a little better. Plus it's so hot, honestly, it feels good to wash my face with cold water in the morning. And my skin is still damp. Um, I just take this um, microfiber towel that I got for my hair actually, but I end up using it to just kind of pat any drips off, but I want my skin still damp. I don't, you know, towel dry my entire face. Then I just take this, put one pump here, and that's really just so that my face isn't dripping all over the place. And that's pretty much enough to spread to the majority of at least my mid and lower face. And whatever's left, put on my forehead. Then I do another pump on my other hand, and put it on my neck. Then I rub my hands together, get it on my forearms, all of those places. I'm just gonna reposition you guys. So I'm just gonna let it absorb. I get questions all the time. Should we pat our skincare products in or rub them? You should rub them in because the skin is not a flat sheet. If you just pat, you're not gonna get all the crevices and grooves covered. It's kind of like, um, you're, think of your skin as like a textured wall and if you just you know pat paint on it, you're gonna miss a lot. There are lots of convexities and concavities. So you wanna rub these in in a gentle circular fashion. Not too hard, but you know, just Gentle circular fashion. All right, this product takes a little bit of time to absorb, but it's pretty much absorbed. It's not the best lighting, but hey, it's it's real life. All right, so you really don't need a lot. Just those two pumps is enough to get your entire face and the neck. Now I'm just gonna come in with my sunscreen. This is the most important part. Uh, and you wanna put the sunscreen on once everything has dried. I'm gonna wear uh, the same sunscreen I wore yesterday. It's the Su Color Science Sun Forgettable Total Face Shield, the matte. I've really been enjoying this. <clears throat> and I think it's back in stock, actually. Oil absorbing properties, so if you are really shiny, I think you would like it. This is what the shade looks like, kind of a medium shade. It's not as, it's not as light peachy as their original formula. But you have to have the sunscreen. Well, hey guys, I came over here to try out this little coffee shop. I'm gonna get some work done just because, I don't know, I was kind of in the mood for a change of scenery, so we shall see. But I have this pretty necklace on that is from Sorelli. I've told you guys I rather enjoy their jewelry. And uh, so I have this necklace. It's really pretty, it's got like, on it.
got an Americana out. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm not so into the modern takes of coffee. <laughs> Sometimes I just find that I don't like, I don't know. I like my coffee a particular way. And I find when I get it out and about, it's just not quite slap your mom in the jaw. Good. Why, why, why are we condoning that? So, local flavor update. <laughs> I don't know, what am I, tour guide? Do you guys remember, comment below, if you remember when I used to go to Pier 1 all the time. In fact, I have a mug from there. Um, when I lived in the other apartment. Well, I'm over by that area, and the Pier 1, apparently Pier 1 went out of business. I don't know, is that, is that a, is that a worldwide phenomenon or is it just the one by that I used to go to when I was out of business? Regardless, it is out of business no more. And what went in its place is this like kind of odd thing. It sounds good in principle, but it, I'm just gonna give you the, the 411 on it. It's this Houston Monopoly adventure type thing. Yes, they do have giant dice. And if you love Monopoly and you love Houston, guess what? Two great tastes that taste great together. <laughs> Sherry's with us here. Look at this, guys. We're going to start right at go. So, folks, yes. this is going to be their first chance grand opening today. Today. The idea is that it's like a, um, you know, a life-size Monopoly that you go in and it's supposed to be interactive. I mean, that's how they lure you in. And I haven't done it yet, but this is what I've heard. They charge you $30 to go in there. And you're going in there thinking that you're gonna get something kind of like I would imagine an escape room is, something like that. Apparently it's $30, but once you get in there, all it is is pictures of different areas in Houston all around the walls. Sounds like the most epic ripoff ever. I don't know how long that's gonna last, but comment below on if you have done the, because I know a lot of you guys are local, uh, comment below on if you have done the Houston Monopoly game. But it sounds like a scam. I kind of miss that Pier 1. Even though Pier 1 was always overpriced. And 9 times out of 10 you could find the stuff a few months later on. Um, what's that website? Joss and Maine. But it was always a fun time to go in there and wander around. They had good mugs. That's, that's one thing I miss. So. I had a thought the other day and I figured I would force my thoughts on you all since why not. Um, that, you know how people are always lamenting what is not taught in schools? I'm going to chime in my two cents of what is not taught in schools that I think should be. You know, people will always be like, they need to teach kids how to do taxes. They need to teach kids how to, you know, bake a souffle, I, I don't know. Um, and if you're an educator, you're like, jeez, oh, here we go again. Um, but this is something I feel would be good education to have and continue it through um, with, you know, building upon what you learned the prior year. And that is how to navigate, this is for the U.S., how to navigate the healthcare system. I notice a lot of people, they will, if they have a problem, they will try and figure out in their head what type of specialist they should see. Like for example, I will see on social media posts outside of like the main the main social medias. I'm talking about like the neighborhood type apps. I will see people posting on there. Got this, you know, pain in my neck. Can anybody recommend a spinal surgeon? And it's like, wait a minute. I feel like there should be education about pro the first of all education that emphasizes the importance of preventative health care and how to go about accessing it within whatever your financial situation is um, because I feel like a lot of people healthcare in this country is insanely expensive but there are ways to go about getting health care especially preventative services for free and I just feel like a class that you took every year and build built upon you know age-appropriate information and built upon what you learned the prior year I just think you know, the business of medicine is meant to confuse people and it's really scary that that's how it's set up. A lot of people don't know about the importance of preventative care. Getting like 
you know, mammograms, pap smears, whatever age appropriate cancer screening there is, blood pressure checks, those kinds of things. People don't really realize the importance of that. So having like some modules of like what happens when you have a problem that, you know, how, how it could have been mitigated with preventative care early on versus, you know, waiting, not getting any preventative care and then all of a sudden a problem developing, how to access affordable preventative care or free, you know, based on your income sliding scale services. Um, I really think would help people out a lot to have some sort of language about, about that. People really get screwed when they end up getting sick and not knowing how to access the kind of care that they need or the services or being scared to thinking that they're gonna go broke, which is a legitimate fear. I mean, if you go down the wrong avenue for your medical care, you can end up completely destitute. Um, you know, like here in Houston, we have um, a program through one of the hospitals for indigent care. We have to apply for this, it's called a gold card. And a lot of people just don't even know that that exists, let alone how to go about applying for it. And then, then, so they don't know about it. They're, you know, worried. They think that they can't afford health insurance or whatever. This is a, you know, for, for people in those situations, but they don't know about it. So they're not accessing it. And then they develop, you know, some complicated medical problem, end stage problem. And then all of a sudden people are telling them, oh, we should apply for a gold card. Well, it takes time to actually get the gold card. So like if they had known that in advance, then they would have been in a much better situation. It's just things like that, that I feel as though people are not getting enough education on, or any education on. Whew, that was a sticky situation. All the lights were out there and no one was home. And what I mean by that is nobody was really on board with what we were supposed to be doing, which is pretty scary. <laughs> Some people were just deciding to not treat it like a four-way stop and just, you know, go. And others were unsure and taking their time and kind of oozing out into the intersection. Yeah. It's quite a deal on these strawberries, 95 cents. And they also have, ooh, these cherries look good, $1.59. That's a pretty good deal. Has anyone tried the Wiz Califia, as I call it, uh, cold brew? It's here at Aldi for $4.99. They also have this Starbucks for $4.53. It's vanilla latte that probably has dairy in it. I'm gonna snag some white vinegar, I'm out. I usually get this at Costco, but I forgot. I use it to clean my produce. I recently got a, sal um, a salsa from here and I was not too pleased with it. It had kale in it, so it sounded really good, but it was pretty bland. But I think this one is actually pretty good. The fire roasted, yeah, I like that one. Well, as always, Aldi was a pleasant shopping experience and this looked delicious. It's hot out, so I couldn't resist a cold sparkling water. Pineapple strawberry flavored sparkling water. Let's give it a try. Mmm, that is nice. Oh, I like that. I don't always like the sparkling, the flavored sparkling waters or sparkling water, but. The heat is on. All right, so I'm back and I've been back for a while. I got this Kiwi gadget. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, Aldi, I'm gonna give it a try because it has Kiwis here. And I typically just eat them and I eat the skin. You can do that if you didn't know. But sometimes it makes my feet, not my feet, my teeth feel kind of furry. I don't know. Anyone else experience that? So I got this gadget kind of impulsively. I thought we could give it a try together. I wouldn't discount it just yet. I 
think the kiwi is too ripe. Yeah, oh yeah, it works well. Okay, all right. Works pretty well. I've had this succulent for about a week and a half and I haven't killed it yet, but I'm a little intimidated. I don't know how to appropriately hydrate it. It seems happy here on the, on the do nothing decorative table. I got this on the Amazonian, by the way. I've actually been really happy with it. Um, so yeah, I mean, I feel like these leaves are looking a little, I don't know, are they happy? They kind of seem happy, I'm not sure. Ugh. It didn't come with any instructions. It was an impulse, but I'm loving it. And this part kind of opened up a little bit. I don't know. I should just Google this, because I'm asking you guys, but by the time you have the opportunity to chime in, it'll already be dead, which I'm fearful of. Slow cooker apples. I started making this in the fall, and I still make it. It's basically just apples that you cut in half, remove the core, chop them up to whatever size you want, put them in the slow cooker with lemon juice, cinnamon, and a little bit of arrowroot starch, and just let them cook down. It's basically like a chunky applesauce. I really like having this with that Kite Hill coconut yogurt. The Coco Yo coconut yogurt really has that nice tang like yogurt should but then the kite hill coconut yogurt is more like sour cream comment below on if you've had that i feel like it i feel as though it tastes more like sour cream than than yogurt but it's good and it's really good mixed with like fruit and stuff so if you are in the market for dairy-free yogurt i highly recommend the kite hill coconut yogurt if you want one that's more sour creamy if you want a tang coco yo and if you want a Greek yogurt, try the Kite Hill Greek yogurt. I have been so enamored with those. And I've been vegan now, I wanna say almost five years. And a lot of the faux dairy things, I'm always like, mm, like I haven't really found too many cheeses that I like, but so far my favorites have been the Kroger vegan cream cheese. I really like that. And I also really like the So Delicious brand uh, coconut shredded cheese. That's my favorite, like, shredded non-dairy cheese. Anyway, that's just a little impromptu review of vegan dairy. But anyways, guys, I wanted to wrap up the vlog here and say thank you so much for coming along with me and listening to me yammer. I hope it was fun and entertaining. And if you enjoyed this vlog, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.